So before I get started, a little housekeeping. After I had so many folks come over from Acorn Arabella, thank you very much. Uh, I had a few comments asking about how to know the order of the videos. I never really thought it was going to get this far, so I didn't worry about episodes and stuff. I've gone back and added episodes now, and I've also cleaned up the playlists. There are three playlists. There's the everything, so any part of the build is in the main playlist. And then I've got two others, one for boat work and one for battery work, if you're only interested in one of those two things. So for this video in particular, it's fairly different from what I usually do, and I'm not quite sure how well it's going to be received. It was a lot more difficult for me to film and edit because it's just not what I normally do, but it's something I really wanted to share. It's a tutorial from a channel whose entire premise is that I don't really know what I'm doing. So it felt kind of silly. It felt a little weird. I sent it out to the patrons first and I got some lovely feedback from them. Encouraging feedback. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense. They're amazing folks. So here it's going to go to the main channel. If you have any feedback on just generally, do you like this video? Do you not like this video? Are there things you would like me to have done differently? Obviously the camera work. I, I should have zoomed in closer. There's some technical stuff that obviously I, I think I can do better if I do another tutorial in the future. But how it's edited, how I show things. This is outside of my comfort zone, so I'd really love to have some feedback. So hopefully some of you guys find this interesting. I love this topic. And we're going to be back to the build in the next video. So I have to turn this spaghetti mess into something manageable. And I'm going to do something I used to do a lot of, haven't done it in years, cable lacing. Cable lacing used to be really common and popular back, as I understand it, in the like late 1800s, early 1900s, first half of the 1900s. It kind of fell out of favor, but NASA still uses it. NASA publishes all of their standards, and standard 8739.4a covers cable lacing for their spaceships. Is this a practical way to do cable lacing on a boat? <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely not. It's certainly not needed. A handful of zip ties would probably do just as good, but I really enjoy it and I haven't done it in years. I just did my first run in years on one of the 12 volt batteries I'm using to get me home. Now, because I haven't done this for years, I figured this is a great chance to practice because when I actually repower my boat, I want to do cable lacing across the boat. All Everywhere there's a cable harness, I want to do lacing. It just, it, it, it makes my nerd heart tickle. So I'm going to try to show you how I do cable lacing. I said that it's based on the NASA standard 8739.4a, but it's slightly different. When they do their running stitch, they just do this simple crossover. I like to do a loop with the cable coming through it. This isn't going to make much sense, but you'll see it in a moment. So that when it tightens up, I should back up and explain. Lacing rope is lacing line, lace, cable lace, whatever, whatever this is technically called. It's got no stretch to it whatsoever but it's wax impregnated. So when it pulls tight against itself in like a knot, the wax kind of oozes together and helps lock it into place. So the way I like to do my running stitch, so you have a locking stitch at the start, you have a running stitch that goes the length of the harness, and then you have a locking stitch at the end. I like to have my running stitch loop through in such a way that when it pulls tight, it binds. And the reason is, is if something ever cuts or breaks the lace somewhere along the harness, it won't start to unravel very easily because each point in the running stitch, the, because it's kind of a knot, the wax grabs and it kind of holds. So if you break the line, it doesn't start to unravel, at least not very quickly. I have got systems out in production that I cable laced 10 years ago, and none of them have failed. It's brilliant, absolutely overkill, totally unjustifiable, and really fun. There's probably people out there who have been professionally trained in how to do cable lacing. And if any of them are watching, they might be yelling at the screen, you're doing it wrong. And that's entirely possible because I just taught myself how to do this by reading the NASA docs and trying my best and experimenting. One of the things I found with that is I like to have a small bobbin because of the way I do my locking stitch, if I was trying to manipulate this, it's just, it's too unwieldy. So I periodically take a bunch and I just wind it around either a piece of foam or some rolled up paper towel, just something that is smaller and easier to manage when I'm, work when I'm working. Inevitably, this runs out in the middle of a running stitch. I just put a square knot in it and clip the ends and keep on going, and it's never been a problem. What I'm working with right now is this absolute mess. The red wire 
is anchored to the switch and there's no way easy to get that out without pulling the whole battery apart, which I'm not keen on doing. If I try to do the cable lace, where is the end? So this is the far end that's going to plug into the back of the screen. If I started lacing from here and worked my way down, eventually all of the knotted up wires start to become a real pain in the ass. So I like to have ideally all of them free so I can sort of work out knots as I go. I can't get the red one out, but I can get the two black ones out. So at least I can work the black ones and the loop that I have laced around the one anchored red wire. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull those black wires off. Now this should not be a problem, but I could have a 48 volt signal on the red wire. So I'm going to tape this up just to be safe. Just give me a little bit better chance that I'm not going to have a short. And the other wire is the data wire for the screen. So now my two black wires are free. As I work my way down, I can move the black wires wherever I want to sort out any knots that might come up. Now with the first one I did, I started the locking stitch on these small wires and it actually slipped right away. So I'm going to start my locking stitch where this shielding is. Now, I'll put a thing on screen so you can look at it while I'm doing it as well, but that's the locking stitch. This is the part that I struggle with the most. Come over the top, around, yes, that's it. So the loop that's going to go around the harness has to go over the incoming stitch. Then it creates a nice little lock there, a nice little knot. Now, that in and of itself is going to hold itself. It's not going to fall apart. That's what I wanted. So now this comes over down and under. Up in behind. Over this way and around the opposite direction around the cable harness and back up and through. And you get that little knot right here and then this comes around goes under the running stitch comes through the back pulls tight and then I do a second one come through the running stitch come around and through and lock that one in as well. So now this should be well locked down. Cut off the excess and now I'm ready to start my running stitch. This is where I do something different than NASA. What they tend to do is they come around like this, come up through the bottom and just keep on going but there's nothing intrinsically locking this together. So if it broke at some point, it would unravel fairly quickly. What I like to do, and I don't remember where I took this name from, but I called it the modified C stitch. But what I do is I take this and I loop it so that this goes over the running stitch. I come around the harness and I come in through the top And then I can use this to set the length between each stitch and I lock that down. Now what's happened is here, you see it has a slack, it's not going to back off because the knot there has caused the wax to sort of grab in and stick together. Same thing again, over, so this one is over top of the running stitch, around, through, and then making sure my wires haven't crossed over and that I've got the right distance I want. Lock it down. Do the same thing. Over, around, and through. Set my distance. Make sure that there's no overlap of the wires. And repeat however many times you need to get the full length. Now, I want to make sure as I go that, see how it wanted to do this? If I let the wires crisscross, it's not going to be very pretty. 
I'm always going or I'm always making sure that the wires stay in the same orientation for the whole lace. So you see how it's really loose here? What I'm doing is I'm sort of working it back and forth until it's a proper knot. I'm going to jump my shrink tubing here. And this is going to be the last one I do before I have to re-spool my bobbin. This up. And I lock it. And again, you can see how, imagine this was a broken piece, it's not going to work its way back. These are now like gummy stuck together. As I mentioned, trying to do the running stitch, you saw how I was passing the lines around each other with a full bobbin. It's an absolute pain in the ass. I'm sure there's somewhere a professional tool for taking this and making it into smaller, more usable bits. I don't know what it is. So what I do, because this has absolutely no stretch, I want to put it over something compressible. It's less likely to unwind. How much I wind onto the bobbin in any given go depends on how much I think I'm going to need because I find that I lose these bobbins really quickly between jobs. So I don't tend to put too much more than I think I'm actually going to need on a given job. So if I lose it, eh, I haven't lost much lace. Someone's going to ask me where I bought this lace. I'm going to have to look it up. I think it was like Garinger or something like that. I bought this roll like 10 years ago. If I can find it, I'll put a link in the description. All right, that's probably enough to finish this job. So now all I do is a simple square knot, like bog simple. Or what really holds this lace together is the uh, wax that's in it. Yeah, so bog standard square knot. And onward we go with our lacing. Dealing with this really coiled wire is a lot of fun. You can see why I pulled the black wires out so I had a chance to keep these things untangled as I go over the top, around behind, through the top, and of course now I've got the knot so it's dangling or getting tangled a little bit, but there we go. Make sure I've got no knots. Wiggle it tight until it locks. Last lock I'll do is right here, and then I'll use that space for the closing lock, or for the locking stitch. All right. So that's my last regular stitch. I'm going to pull more than I need. Put that aside. Now, so continuing on as if it was another stitch, dropping down towards me and underneath. So this one here is coming under that. And then I'm turning around and going the opposite direction and running another loop around the harness and bringing this in through that to create that. Now from here, I'm going to take this, run it through that last running stitch. Get under there. Can you please get under there? There we go. Pull it in behind, lock it down, run another one through, a few tatters. Come in from the back, lock it down. Pull this a bit tight again. Clip off the excess, and we're done. I think this is a much more pretty cable harness and much more manageable. I mean, you saw how messy it was before and how unwieldy and they were tangling with each other. And it doesn't take that long. I mean, compared to just using zip ties, yeah, it takes a long time, but you probably wouldn't use that many zip ties. And the other thing that's really nice is that anyone who's ever used zip ties knows that when you cut the end, they're super sharp and you run your hand in trying to fish something and you're slicing up your arm. This doesn't cut you. It's just it's just better in every way. So yeah, that was, uh, by my standards, a nice short little video on 
the lost art of cable lacing. I should say the mostly lost art of cable lacing. I'm sure there's some people out there who are still quite aficionados who can do better than me, but I'm very happy with what I can do considering I taught myself. I'm the Digital Mermaid and uh, thank you for watching.